right, this is the dethatcher. Uh, what we're going to start out doing is checking your fuel level. It needs to be at least three quarters in the tank. That's what we fill them to. If it happens to be full to the top, we'll just have to let it ride. But if you're filling them up, we want to stop at the three quarter mark, which is about right here. Next, we're going to go check our oil. Just like any other engine, you want to make sure your engine is level when you're checking the fluid level on it. Otherwise, you'll get a false reading. Uh, this one right here, as you can see, it's to the lip. That's where it needs to be sitting at. Next, we're going to come check our air filter. These are generally the three things I start out with on most of these machines here. They're some of the most important ones as well on the engine aspect of it. Also, when you're taking this air filter off, there's a little ring underneath it that may come off. We need to make sure we get that back on there. Sometimes it'll stick to the bottom and you don't see it and it'll just fall off and there you go. No, no rubber ring. This keeps the dirt and water out of the carburetor. Next we're going to go and we're going to check the outer ring, make sure we don't have any tears or cuts in it, if there's any tears or cuts it needs to be replaced. And then we're going to check our rubber seat inside of here, it's basically connected to the bottom of this. If this is damaged for any reason we're going to need to take this and replace the whole filter. This will allow water and dirt to get in here as well. Next we're going to look to make sure we can see light through the particles or the elements in the uh, filter. After that, we're going to put the outer jacket back on. If you can't see light through the elements, then you need to replace the filter. What we can do, if it is pretty dirty, is we can do a tap out. Just knock out some of that dust. Replace the filter. After that, we need to go down and do an inspection of the undercarriage of this thing. There's also one grease fitting on this side on this machine. There may be more on others. It's good to check around the shaft area. On the outer bearings, that's generally where the grease fitting is going to be. This one on this machine just happens to be right up in this hole right here. It's kind of hidden. Let me grab a grease gun real quick. We'll go ahead and... You're going to want to chalk one of them wheels with your foot. Bring this up. While you're down here, you also want to be in inspecting for any kind of stuff in your bearings. If there's anything hanging out of the bearing, sometimes you can take a pair of needle nose pliers and pull it out. These things do get quite a bit of stuff up in them. So. Now on this machine, this has a couple of Screws you gotta check out that we'll take out to check your belts. It's behind this plastic housing here. Let me grab a wrench real quick and we'll loosen that up. Our wheels are tight. It's bad. Belts look good. So we're going to reapply the housing. Sometimes you just got to move them around a little bit and they'll go in eventually.
when you're screwing these in, if it's not going to go for any reason, don't try and cross thread it. Don't force it. That just adds headache later. Sometimes you have to wave it around to get it to go in. Chest when it's coming. There's all kinds of fetishes out there. <laughs> I need a damn cherry picker. All right. Boom left? Or are you talking about engine hoist? Engine hoist. All right, and last on this machine, you're going to want to make sure you check your pull cord rope. You want to pull it all the way out. Check it all the way down. Make sure you don't have any tears or burrs. If you do, we need to replace that. And you can check on the video on how to replace the pull cord assemblies. That's, that's it on the detachers.